Tully, when you guys were up there, you know, one of the, the things we've talked about with Arn is how brutal the travel schedule was compared to when you worked for Crockett. Can you give us a glimpse into what that schedule looked like? Because we've heard from you a lot on like old WWE DVDs where you talked about the crazy horseman lifestyle where you guys would wake up here, do the show, fly to Vegas, party all night, fly back the next morning, do another show, fly back to Vegas. This crazy jet setting line, but now, man, you're on 6 a.m. flights all over the world, right? Oh, gosh. It was, yeah. <laughs> if there was an earlier flight, you were on the earlier flight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, my gosh. It was, uh, it was crazy. And we, we were on uh, 14 day tours. We were supposed to be 14 on, three days off, three day, five days on, three days off, 14 on, and like that. But it seemed like we were on 14, off three days, on 14. But you had to, not only did you have to fly home on your first day off of your three days, so... It seemed like they did it on purpose. We were either in Vancouver or Portland, Oregon. I remember one time we were up in Nova Scotia, which is a three-hour flight to Boston, flying back to Charlotte. And then you had to buy your own ticket to get home. And then when you, you depending on where your, your tour started, you had to fly out either the night, I, I, I think we flew out the night before. So you really, your three days off are really a, a day and a half off. But we might've flew out on, on Monday. I, I mean, on, uh, on the, the morning of our, of our next show. I don't, I don't really remember. It's, it has been a while. Yes, it has been a while. And uh, <laughs> I hope when you guys had to buy your own airline tickets, you had extra cash kicking around. Tully, when did you realize, hey, man, this might not be all it's cracked up to be? Uh, I'm not saying I necessarily want to run back and work for Jim Crockett Promotions, but thankfully, that's not a thing anymore. <laughs> Turner's running the show, but I don't know what I got to do, but I got to get off this crazy train of working for Vince McMahon and being in a different town every single day. Yeah, well, I mean, we were in a different town every every night, basically, with the other company, too, but the private planes made it a little bit easier flying yeah. home and uh uh that kind of stuff but it it was uh it was hard work wrestling you know every night but that but that's when the live audience was your product mm -hmm. and the tv show was the infomercial and when that all changed it it changed the way the the business is but it was you know I, I, <sighs> I don't remember. I know when Arn and I wrestled the first time in the Garden uh, against the Midnight, not uh, against uh, Rockers. the Rockers, the Rockers. Um, we had to go twenty-minute time limit match, and the probably the biggest major tactical error that I ever did was when I came back through the the curtain. Hogan looked at me and said. What do I, what am I supposed to do now? And I said something smart, Alec, and uh, don't remember exactly what it was, but we were never on, we were never on before the main event ever again. We were never on another Hogan card ever again. Oh. And, uh, but it was, they were running three towns a night. We became the main event guys in the third towns. And, the third town started making money instead of losing money. Wow. So it was, it, you know, I mean, it wasn't a bad thing, but we were making the same money we were making for Crockett. So it was a lateral move. Right. And, uh, you well, know, so of a private plane now. Yeah. Yeah. But it, and, and the horseman Crockett did fly the horseman first class when they were on commercial flights. 
which that was roasty toasty and, and uh, a good thing. But, uh, you know, so it, it was just a thing where, you know, they, they, they reached out uh, after Turner bought Crockett. They reached out to us. No, no, I, I called. Arn, wasn't it, wasn't it we called when we were in Denver? I don't remember where we were. Um, we'd, we'd wrestled in Sacramento the night before and drove back to San, to, uh, San Francisco to catch a flight to Denver. And we had talked about, uh, going, calling them and asking if they want to put the horsemen back together. And so the next morning, I think it was Denver may not have been, but I called up and asked for Barnett and I said, uh, Jim, I said, do you want to put the horsemen back together again? And uh, he said, I'll call you back in five minutes. And the phone rang, and he, he didn't say anything other than $750,000 each for three years. And uh, I said, okay. And I, did I call you, or were you in the room with me, Arn? Uh, I think you called me. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, that was more money than I had ever thought about making. And we agreed to it and uh, spent the next three months trying to get out of New York. Uh, 